Welcome back to That's So Nova. If it's your first time here, welcome. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back and supporting the channel. It helps tremendously. Today, we're going to be doing the Orosa pattern that is a clutch. It's called the Dina Clutch Wallet. It is named after a dear friend of Alexis. And this wallet shows how much she really cares about this friend. This is a wallet or can be a clutch or can be both or a mini purse. And we'll go into further details towards the end so you can and see where you can make um, the adjustments to your pattern to make it what you desire. Um, today we're going to be doing this pattern. It is a comes together quite brilliantly and fun. So I'm going to go over the anatomy of the wallet. So we have a uh, a front uh, flap. Now this flap I didn't have the hardware. But if you have the hardware, you can, there is a part of the um, PDF pattern where you can cut it where it is on a perfect straight edge to put the bar. The bar you will see on the cover photo, as well as there is a curved C wallet. And both these um, wallet ends you can get at Emmeline Bags, but Alexis was found some other sources for um, that are on Etsy that you can get. I didn't have the... Um, the hardware but that didn't deter me i made this out of a beautiful riley blake um alice in wonderland fabric and i just took two roses and had it as an accent i like that little detail you have a two magnets and inside you have a slip pocket you have credit card pockets and you have a zippered pocket as well as another slip this bag has beautiful details of having the side gussets where you can now add a corset ring so you can have a wristlet for a date night or going out or just because or you could put two d rings and have it as a mini purse the, uh, the opportunities are absolutely endless it is a very fast wallet to put together and i think it's a perfect gift to yourself as well as for others and a great a great thing to have on your shop to sell as well as maybe at craft shows and expos this will be a great a great wallet to feature so we just seen the anatomy we're going to get started like i said there's not a lot of components to this um having measure having your measurements um precise is key what um there are a cut list that you will get on page six there's not many pieces to it but all of them come together beautifully so we're going to start off you, where you tells you where to have your woven interfaces at. Please make sure you pay attention to the card slots and the um, zipper pocket, how the interfacing is placed. It is placed so that way you don't have anything in your seam allowances. Today I'm going to be using for my credit card slot water resistant, waterproof canvas. I haven't done this in a long time, so I have no interfacing on it. All right, so we're going to get started. We're going to go to page one, and we're going to get um, our main panel piece. So on our main panel piece, the pattern piece has an area where we need to draw for magnets placement. So I'm going to line the pattern piece up on here. And sometimes what I like to do is I'd like to just put a little clip so nothing gets <laughs> moving I am I'm like known for having like something just bump and move right when I'm trying to sew something or you know piece the pattern pieces together so I just cut it I punched it out with a little hole I'm going to use a Tandy leather pen and I'm just going to mark on my cork fabric the placement I'm just making sure I have the right area for the placement. Then I'm gonna put this pattern piece to the side and we have our two placements. Then I'm gonna go get washers for magnets. We're going to install the female portion of the magnet. I'm gonna get the washers. Everything wants to connect to the magnets right now. And I'm going to use the washers as areas to know where I could punch or put slits through the pieces so that way it all can fit nice. 
I'm going to use a little X-Acto knife and punch four slits. What I like to do, even if this is cork and it doesn't fray, I like to put a little bit of glue right where the I place the center dot. And I like to put it over the slits too. I'm using beacon glue. I buy this stuff, but <laughs> so many bottles. Like every time I check out anywhere, if I see beacon glue, I'm like, yeah, I need more. My husband's like, really? You don't, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I just love glue. <laughs> and I'm putting the washers on there. And using a back of a <laughs> marker tool to fold down the prongs. And I'm going to grab some electrical tape to cover up washers. And the, covering them up just helps protect your lining fabric from rubbing against and causing friction and maybe cause tears. So we have that piece. We're going to now grab the piece E and it is the top band. I'm sorry, piece D. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just clip my pattern into place. I'm going to transfer those marks. I like the fact that we got to get the um, this part out of the way. I always get super nervous when I'm putting in magnets that um, when I do it last. It makes me feel like I might make a mistake. And I don't know. It just I feel like it helps tremendously to put them in in the beginning so it's less thing to worry about. Now, one thing I will say is that when you're dealing with magnets, and you're having material that you can iron, like I, you can iron cork, um, you can iron cotton, some waterproof canvases and water resistance. Be cognizant that you don't accidentally iron over the maggot, magnet, <laughs> the magnet, the um, magnet. When you do that, it can actually weaken the strength of the magnet and slowly make it um, demagnetize. And you don't want that. You don't want to have created this gorgeous wallet and all of a sudden, bam, you can't really open and close it. Okay. Feeding the prongs through the slits that I created. And let's see. And again, we're just, you can put the prongs in towards itself, out, it's your call. Some people feel like with the progs out, they can still slide out and when they collapse on top of each other, it's harder for the magnet to come out. Um, I And I, I actually agree with that part, but it, sometimes I feel like it can create unnecessary bulk. So it all depends. That's why I always do the beetle glue to help it not shift. Okay, so we have that. We have that all squared away. We're going to go ahead and go on page 17. On page 17, it advises us to clip this wrong sides touching because we're going to figure out where we are going to put our placement and making sure that the magnets fit right. So you can use some uh, like double-sided tape that's not very sticky and you can fold this edge over. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pop a clip on both sides and pretend that I folded it to use some double-sided tape. I can't find my paper like uh, score tape to save my life and I, I've been looking for it. So we're going <laughs> to fold this over, place these magnets on, and you can kind of get a layout of where if you where you want to put your uh, ID or your nameplate if you're using a logo or a tag. Um, you also could put it on in the back if you wish. It's truly your discretion. 
Um, I would definitely put it in the corner around here. I think it'll be really nice. I actually did not grab one, so I will grab one right now. Let's get a magnet. All right. I'll grab one of these. I really don't like that with that. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I like that better. <laughs> I have my moments. <laughs> All right. So we can just put like a mark where we think our, our, our ID will look nice in. And if you choose to have your logo on the back, um, position it she gives you a kind of an idea where you can place it towards the back i actually had mine's on the back last time and i think i like that better than having it there so i'm just going to put a mark and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to unclip this on magnetize it and what I'm going to do just to make sure I have it truly centered is fold it in half and just put a little T so I want this to go on the back making sure that my logo is up in the right position grab some double-sided tape because I am notorious for <laughs> not having things positioned the right way. And All right, I'm going to take this over to my machine and see when you fold it over like this, your logo is facing this way. So just face it the direction towards the nice curved edge. And I'm going to go ahead and just top stitch just real quick. Um, I top stitch out like one eighth of an inch and I back stitch one or two. Um, I like the metal logos because you can just put your prong in it and call it a day. I kind of mix it up every now and again. <laughs> All right, so we have our logo on. And if you also, a handmade logo. Um, I know Emmeline Bags and so many other designers have really cute handmade logos and I just, I love it. So now I'm going to put this on the side and we're going to start constructing our, um, zip, our slot, card slots. Now the card slots have a very specific measurement as well as a very specific how you need to measure your interfacing. Your interfacing is measured almost one inch shorter so that way it doesn't create any bulk within the seams. I wrote a top on mine. I suggest you do the same because when I did this, when I did it with the bunnies, <laughs> I didn't want to lose the direction. And as long as I had the top, I knew this, this first part was gonna get folded down, I was in the correct direction and I knew that my bunnies weren't gonna be upside down. And if that, it helps tremendously to know that if you have directional fabric. So when you get your, um, when you cut it out, you make your marks that are on figure um, 27, you're gonna take the first top part that you wrote top on there and you're gonna fold it wrong sides touching. You're gonna hit it with some uh, an iron and some steam. Then you're gonna flip it, take the next one and fold it over. So folding, Go to the next line, fold it over, hit it with the iron. Fold it off the lines, hit it with the iron. I use a hot roll, a hot ruler at the um, ironing station to make sure that I get things as even as I possibly can because I'm really bad at that. And then sometimes if I don't can't find the hot ruler because I'm notorious for losing things as well, I'll get like a thin ruler or I'll get cardstock and have it a straight line and use that as a guide to um help me iron. So you basically do the accordion thing and you wind up having four credit card slots that are about a half an inch thick. So then when you take it, we're gonna take it to our machine and we're gonna top stitch it one eighth of an inch. And I don't know why I back stitched because we're gonna do some. And I also 
did something wrong. We're not supposed to um, go through the first layer on, we're only supposed to go through one layer on the, the top card, credit card stitch, not all four layers. I got excited. <laughs> all right, hold on. I'm going to remove this and then we can start from the bottom from the top and then I'll explain why. All right, so I'm gonna start from the bottom card slot and I'm gonna top stitch at 1 8 of an inch. And since we're gonna be trimming off both edges, um, you, I'm not back stitching. I'm trimming the threads to make sure that they are nice and clean. And we're going to go for the third row. Okay, so for the top one, we're not going to top stitch through all the layers. We're only going to top stitch through the first layer. So you're going to take it from being folded to open it up and top stitch one eighth of an inch from the crease, just making sure you're only going through one layer. All right. So let's trim all those little threads and we have this. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to bring this top part that we didn't top stitch and this together and we're going to sew it at three eighths of an inch and yes you're supposed to have before you go further you're probably going to be like wait one side's a little bit shorter there's a reason <laughs> alexis always has a reason <laughs> so it will we will just take this over and you could put a few clips if you wish um i like to put clips on the very bottom so that nothing shifts and then we're gonna do this at three eighths of an inch. I will back stitch for this. All right. And then we're gonna trim this down to one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Do not trim into your stitches. All right, we're gonna turn this inside out. And last time I did this, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> it's going to just take a minute. You're just gonna have to maneuver it and fold it. And the reason why, that's the reason why it was shorter in one side and longer on the other side. So the seam goes to the back and is not visible in the front. Quite genius, right? Super, so super clever. Um, so I'm going to do this. If you have cotton, definitely take this to your, your, uh, your press and, or iron and give it a nice little press. Um, I wanted to try waterproof canvas because I knew with the turning, you wouldn't, it wouldn't show as much, many as wrinkles. So we're going to now, you, pr you press your card slot like you did on step 10, and then we're going to grab a ruler and I'm just going to grab chippy over here. Don't judge my chipped, uh, ruler. I love it with all my heart. <laughs> and we're going to measure four and one fourth of an inch. And I'm just going to draw a line. I'm not going to do it in pink. Last time I did the chalk over in pink, it just did not come out. I'm going to do a white chalk and we're going to go use this to do our center divider. Now, when I do credit card slots, I like, you definitely backstitch at the beginning and the end, but I like to um, backstitch eat over each slot because I'm an overstuffer on my credit card slots. So I automatically assume anyone that gets a, <laughs> a credit card for me, I mean a wallet for me, is most likely an overstuffer too. Overstuffers unite. <laughs> All right. 
So what you're gonna do from here is you're gonna trim everything off and then you're gonna measure four inches from the left and four inches from the right. When you do that, you're basically taking off one fourth of an inch on each side, but make sure you measure, um, like you bring your ruler over and put the four and one fourth of an inch right on the line and then trim it. Um, and Cause you want this pocket to become eight inches. So I'm gonna take this over real quick and I'll be right back. So measuring over four and one fourth inch and cut. I mean, sorry, four in, um, four inches. I can't talk today. You're gonna measure, uh, put your ruler on the line at four inches and trim. You're basically cutting off one fourth of an inch on each side. So that way we can have a perfect eight inch pocket. All right, so we have our beautiful eight inch pocket and that is ready to go. It's super cute and it's exactly eight inches. All right. See how fast it's coming together? I wasn't joshing you. So we're gonna grab now our pocket or zipper pocket. Again, I feel, I can't say this enough. Alexis mine is seriously cool because I would have never thought of anything like this. So I'm gonna grab my eight inch zipper and I'm going to grab my zipper pocket one and my zipper pocket two. So I'm going to take my eight inch zipper and I'm going to make some center marks in the half. I don't snip into zipper thread, zipper tape at all because I've I've seen some bad ramifications from it. So I'm, I don't want to mess with it. I just I rather just uh, not. So I'm going to sew this down using a one inch one eighth of an inch. And you're like, hey, you know, there's like over a half an inch on each side that is a gap. There's a reason. Just follow the process. So trim that. And then we're going to separate our teeth. And I'm going to put the center mark. The, this is the right side. The wrong side of the zipper tape is going to touch the right side of the lining. So that down. Trim, trim, trim those threads. All right. So then we're going to take pocket number one. And we are going to sew this side down at three eighths of an inch. You'll see the zipper the zipper fits exactly um, at the eight inch. If you do the other direction, it is it's like a half an inch too short. So just keep that as a in your thought process. And I backstitched in the beginning and end of each stitch. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. It's gonna bow a little bit and that's fine. And raw edges touching raw edges, three eighths of an inch. So we're going to turn this right sides out. And then we're going to, you could take this to your iron and press it, or I'm going to finger press. We're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch. Trim, 
trim, trim, trim. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So just kind of roll over that bulk to the other side. Finger press everything down or take it to your iron and press it and top stitch at one eighth of an inch. All right. So after we top stitch, we're going to want to make a we're going to want to make a zipper edge. So I'm going, you can make it, I'm going to make, I made mine's about a half an inch because I just like the way it looks because you can see the map really well. Um, and how we do that is we take a, we're going to take a zipper. And I'm going to, you, if you want your zipper to close to the left, you need to put it on the right. If you want your zipper to close to the right, you need to put it, install it on the left hand side. There's no wrong or right answer, so do what you know feels good to you. Um, my daughter is left-handed. One of my daughters is left-handed. I have like something inside the zipper head. That's so weird. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like I'm like what is this? I can't. Got it. All right. It's like a seed <laughs> or hay. Let's see. I'm going to put this on. I put both pieces. I feed the um, zipper tape in both sides and then I look to see if it's at the middle bar. And once it is, I can have this flat. So I'm going to do mine about a half an inch. You can do it smaller, but I usually do it at a half inch. And I just kind of tuck the lining down all the, all the way before I'm going to top stitch. Because we're top stitching one eighth of an inch and it shouldn't technically really touch your lining pieces. And I'm going to back stitch on this one eighth of an inch. Because this is going to be turned into a slip pocket like I showed you in the beginning. All right, so we have that. And if you see our lining's in a tube and it's kind of free and clear, it didn't hit the top stitching. That is because we're going to be stitching it down in an alternate way. So we're going to unzip this. I know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going to unzip this. We're going to turn it this is hard flap. We're going to turn it wrong sides out. And you're going to pay attention to where your flap is. Because that's going to be the top of it. And we are going to kind of, I'm going to kind of clip the zippers like if they were going right sides touching. I found it easier to do it this way. So the zippers are going up towards the interior and we're going to stitch three eighths of an inch all the way up. Now be very cognizant of not trying to stitch into the zipper tape or onto the exterior or it will show when you turn it right sides out. So what I found easiest to do is to sew the lining part towards me. Like when I do this, I'm trying to back stitch onto something that it's not going to really get a good stitch or I'm going to accidentally hit the zipper teeth or the exterior. So stitching towards me, I feel like I have a little bit better control over the situation. So back stitch and then get as close as you can without touching the zipper tape or the exterior. And I'm going to flip it on this side and do the same. Three eighths of an inch. I like to back stitch off one. All right. So I'm going to turn this right sides out. Oh, 
Oh, I was trying to turn right sides out without with a clip on and everything. I'm gonna tuck in the lining. And I'm going to snip this thread. I, I'm like notorious for rogue loose threads. And let's see, I think. I'm trying to get all these little, I, when I work with cotton, I notice I just get a lot more little, little hairs, you know, <laughs> little cotton hairs. Okay, so I'm going to put the zipper back on. I'm gonna do it twice. You could just have like a chaser zipper pull where you put one on and then you put one right on after it. So that way you're, it's not too difficult. Because the more you put the zipper on, the more it can actually start to get a little, uh, starts, you know, fraying a little bit. If that happens, then hit the lighter with it and singe those ends. Just seeing if it is even and it adds up. Okay, lines up real good. Again, if you want the zipper to close to the left, put it on the right. If you want it to close to the right, put it on the left. And it's kind of, it's, if you can see this, it's kind of fraying a little bit. So I'm gonna take my lighter. Just want it to go on smooth. <laughs> and it's like, guess what? You're, you keep saying smooth and I'm not going to do it that way. There we go. And I'm just going to put this in the center. So that way when we're constructing this next part, it's kind of out of the way. All right. So we're going to grab our main lining pieces and I'm going to grab one right now. And I'm going to... We're gonna put the card slots onto the bag. So I'm gonna grab my really horrible ruler. <laughs> it's like, I, I refuse to get rid of it even though it's fell like a hundred times. All right, so, so the first one we're going to have two main lining pieces and the first one we're going to position um, from the top of the of the of the um, the card slot so if you have directional just be cognizant about that and we're going to be I'm going to just do white chalk can you so you can see how I'm lining it up I'm going to take clips the reason why I do chalk you can do it over with your ruler. It's just like if my ruler just moves a hair, I'm gonna be here for hours trying to put it together. <laughs> Let's see, clip this into place. And I'm gonna sew, we're gonna sew one eighth of an inch down, across and up. Let me move these other pieces out of the way. And I like to backstitch. And just making sure everything lines up. We have our beautiful card slots. I'm gonna trim those. I'm just gonna dust off the chalk. It'll 
it'll start going away on its own. The white chalk always does. It's always the other colors that I seem to have a huge issue with. So we're gonna do the same measurements that we did for the top, but we're gonna do it on the bottom. <laughs> why, why does my ruler sound like that? My chalk pen sound like that. It sounds like it's like <laughs> the little engine that could. <laughs> We're going to put this and clip it. It's always, I know this, it's a mental block, but I always feel like I can um, line things up easier from the bottom than the top. I have no idea why. It makes zero sense. But we're going to now top stitch this at one eighth of an inch down, across, and up. You also could put like a little bit of like one eighth of an inch double sided tape if that helps you put, keep things in more in line then put the clips on the bottom. But um, I wasn't trying to like gum up the needles and they last again. I cannot find my one eighth of an inch tape. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> so then it looks really good. And we're going to take these make sure that they're oriented to the right side so you should see the zipper going towards the left and your card slots going towards that too and we're going to sew three eighths of an inch but we're only going to sew three eighths of an inch one inch in so i'm just going to put a bright pink mark here so you can see <laughs> we're going to sew three eighths back stitch three eighths of inch go to the pink back stitch then i'm going to take my um, threads and just drag them over here and do it the same thing. While I'm doing that, I want to make sure everything stays aligned and nothing shifts. So I'm just going to clip right here in the sides to make sure that nothing shifts. I like to backstitch one off. And once I backstitch and I feel satisfied, I'm going to go over here and do the same. All right, I'm gonna trim threads. And when you do that, when you open it up, you can take this to your iron and give it a nice press. When you open it up, it will be like this. I'm looking anywhere desperately for some double-sided tape. <laughs> It'll be like this. So this is where our opening is going to be. So you do, if you go to your machine, uh, your ironing board, and you press this open, you can finger press it, but I feel like it won't be as good as a press with an iron or um, double-sided tape. So we're going to grab some not super sticky double-sided tape. Not thrilled, but it will do in this pinch because there will be no sewing over this. So you could use permanent double-sided tape. I'm just going to fold this over and finger press it. Where the opening is, there'll be no sewing. So you can glue, um, whatever you need to get that nice crease. See? Nice. All right. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to grab our little gusset wings. <laughs> they're not called gusset wings. They're, they're pattern piece H, but they look like little baby wings. So that's what they're going to be for right now. <laughs> We're going to, you have mirror pieces. So you're going to take your mirror pieces and you're going to put them together and we're going to sew three eighths of an inch all the way around except the straight edge in the front. So that's make sure everything sh doesn't shift and everything's aligned.
They're so cute though. They're a really cute shape. They kind of like look like old, like the vintage TVs when you put them together. <laughs> All right. So three eighths of an inch. And just take your time because there are some curves and you just want to make sure you really hit that three eighths of an inch and you're not like three eighths of an inch in one part and then one fourth on the other side. Consistency is super key to make a nice gusset. And back stitch well at the beginning and the end because you're going to be turning these. Let's do it again. I'm going to get my pinking shears and I'm going to pink around and I'm going to pink it about one eighth of an inch towards the stitches. Do not cut through your stitches. Take your time. Okay, that's one. Two. All right, so we're going to turn them right sides out. Be gentle and take your time. As I'm like roughly doing it, yeah, be gentle. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's like when you tell like somebody to do something like because it's beneficial, and then you're just like roughhousing it. Just taking um, a, a non-pointy object, a nice blunt object to kind of round out the corners. That's one. Let's see if I can do this more gracefully. <laughs> Let's see, nope. <laughs> they're tiny but <laughs> they're sorry they're very it's very doable it's just me i have i am like super not gentle with things and it does not work out if i if i don't i should always try if you go too rough you can wind up poking a hole in to it and you don't want that because then you have to go back and try to stitch it like I'm doing right now. It's not the end of the world if you have to stitch like one little area. It's just, it's not fun. But I don't want to have it where like a raw edge is po poking out, you know? Let's see. All right, so we're gonna, you could take this to your iron and heat it, hit it with the iron real quick. I'm gonna top stitch it after you hit it with the iron at one eighth of an inch going around, except on the straight edge that's open. Get 
get these little cork hairs. All right, I'm gonna do this on this side. So just not this opening, just around, just basically where we just stitched. One eighth of an inch. Take your time if you have to reposition, have the needle down. So now we're going to be on page 23 and we are going to take our area and just look at the orientation of your bag. We are going to be putting these wings on to where the card slot side is. So we're going to do some quick measurements from the bottom. And it's kind of hard if you have a darker color. Just be a little patient with yourself and um, measure as many times as you need. I'm gonna just do it with a chalk. And then also look at how these are orient, like how they're positioned. Um, it looks like when you're looking at it from this way, the longer part of the curve is going towards the, pot, um, the card slots. So, Position it right on to that mark that you made. So like, I know this goes down, but just position the straight edge right on the mark that you made from the bottom. And do that on the other side. All right, and then we're gonna top stitch this into place. And I'm just gonna go at 1 8 of an inch. It's a little basting stitch. And this is why it was really important in the beginning when I emphasized that you need to make sure that you keep um, your interface out of your seam allowance because we're, doing, we're going through a lot of layers right now. And we're gonna put one more layer on there, and this is like the thickest part of the back paint, and it's not that bad at all. I did it on my um, my other Juki, the bag that you see, and the cotton, and I didn't. I had a zipper foot on the whole time. I was like, no hub jumper, yay! So we're gonna grab piece G, and those have Decoville light as the interfacing. Now again, look at the figures. We have the card slots right here, which I did a not good job trimming. Um, so it looks like the very top, the whitest part of piece G goes where the zipper is at the top. So I'm going to just place a clip right here and they're mirrored images. So you want the straight edge to follow with the straight edge. The, large, the widest part of it goes on to where the zipper pocket is. And we're going to sew this on at 3 8 of an inch. And I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And I'm going to keep this clip on. I'm just going to move it a little further down so it's nowhere near the zipper. I mean the, um, the zipper foot. The zipper foot. The sewing foot. Okay, just trimming those threads. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna go up 3 8 of an inch.
Okay. All right. Trimming those threads. So then we're going to just finger press and we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch onto the little flap. I'm sorry, my the paperwork is like sliding and I was like, oh yeah. I didn't want that to fall off. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. That's consistently trim those threads. One eighth of an inch. Okay, you did it. To me, that's the thickest part and I think you can get it done. Um, so what we're going to do, once we top stitch, we're going to trim the seam allowance to one fourth of an inch. So we're roughly taking about a one eighth of an inch off. All right. And trimming it helps it like relax. Trimming is important. Be careful because you're going through a lot of thickness. So just make sure that your hands don't accidentally get in the way in case you're like your, your zipper jump, your cutting cuts, you're cutting, <laughs> you're cutting your scissors jump. That has happened to me where I got to a thick piece and then like my, my scissors just moved and I accidentally nicked my hand. And, uh, and so now it's something I just pay attention to. So we have that we're going to grab our front exterior piece. Now we're going to go to figure, uh, figure 83. And again, look at where it's being placed against. It's getting placed against where the zipper pocket is. So we're going to line everything up. One moment. Sorry about that. Kick calling. <laughs> I'm going to, we're going to place our exterior um, mate top band to the side where our zipper pocket is. This is because it, the zipper pocket, well, as soon as you open up the, the, the bag, it's going to be the first thing you have access to. So we're going to sew this together at three eighths of an inch, clip it. And I always say, find your centers. It makes a huge difference in case something looks a little off. And apparently I cannot line things up right now. Raw edges meeting raw edges. And let's go. Back stitch really well at the beginning and the end. And back stitch. All right. Going to trim these threads. And I'm going to finger press this up and then I'm gonna to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. Okay, so after you top stitch this, that came out really nice. You're gonna trim down. Um, you're gonna trim down the seam allowances to one fourth of an inch, and you're gonna. It's gonna. You're gonna press it down with like you can use a pair of, um, like, 
I use this. I don't even know what I would call it. I use a a thing that I usually use for key fobs and <laughs> I just kind of take it to the seam that's going to be bulky and just press it down so that way it can help reduce bulk. There's a pair of pliers that our clamp and ha our hammer is suggested on, pay on figure uh, 91. And it does. It helps with just pressing it. Um, I have no idea where I got this. It's just something that was in my arsenal. I think it's for key fobs. <laughs> but I only did key fobs for a, a hot minute. So don't quote me on that. We're going to grab the bottom band now. And again, look at if when in doubt, look at how it's positioned in uh, figure 80, um, 87. So the longer part goes across and the shorter part is to facing towards the inside of the, of the wallet. So we're going to do this at three eighths of an inch. Okay, so then we're gonna finger press this as well. And we're gonna top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. So your seam allowances should be up towards the band because that's where we're gonna trim. All right, let's trim this seam allowance down on the side down to one fourth of an inch. I'm taking about one eighth of an inch off because if I snip too close, I don't wanna snip into any stitches. Let's reduce this bulk though. And again, you can use the clamps to press down these seams. Now we're gonna go to page 25 and we're putting together the wallet. This is really exciting. So, I, it should be like where you see everything orientated is exactly how it's going to be. I'm a person that needs to know where to pivot though, where the three eighths of the inches. It's really important for me because if I don't have that visual, I will, <laughs> I will somewhat mess up. So I like to draw in pen or pencil, something I can see with my eye where the three eighths of the inch area is. So I know where to pivot and to have the needle down. Just like a, I do like a little T so I can get as close as I possibly can. All right. Then I'm going to take both sides and we're just going to clip. Clip as many as clips as you want or as few. It's your discretion. Everything should fit nice and easy, especially if you did all the seam allowances the correctly. Everything should fit and there shouldn't be any overhang. All right, so we're going to start and I'm going to start on either side and I'm going to back stitch and it's three eighths of an inch. Just making sure everything lines up. Take your time around the curves, one stitch at a time. A stiletto can help tremendously during this time too to help you pivot in areas. If you, when you start to turn in a different direction, make sure you're needle down. 
And if you're doing the curve versus the straight edge, just follow the line on your um, guide. If your sewing machine doesn't have it, you can measure three eighths of an inch where your needle is and just use some uh, painter's tape or wasabi tape, paper tape, whatever you can to make a guide for you and just follow that. If you can see, um, I'm using one hand kind of to hold up so it's not flat and I'm just, I can help uh, move it around a little bit easier or so I think I can. <laughs> it might just be all in my head. <laughs> There's a lot of curves, so just take your time. Okay. All right. Nice, all right. So I'm gonna grab um, my pinking shears and I'm definitely gonna pink around all these curves so they can lay flatter. And you're going, trying to go about to have a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. So just be patient when you're doing this. Um, there's a lot of blades moving, so take your time. Kind of looks like a, a, a jar, like a mason jar or a vase jar for flowers. Like, no, just just me. I guess it looks like a vase. <laughs> you can go do it just at the curves, but like I've already have the scissors out. I'm just gonna finish it. And because you're, it's only really like, for me, two layers of cork, it's easier to trim. And then I'm just gonna go where the corners are and just reduce the bulk just a little itty bitty more. All right, grab our scraps. So then we're going to birth it and it's through this hole. So you, if your, if your bag is stiff, like if you use vinyl, you can heat, like warm it up with an iron on this side and this side. So that way you can birth it easier. Take your time. And you just want to poke out all the curves. That looks good. All right. And if this area is too bulky, again, you could take your pliers or your, um, <laughs> in my idea, um, key fob 
and just press down the seam or you can get like a mallet hammer and you can pam 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 it just i will put a some cloth over it so it doesn't like mess up anything i have like a rogue thread all right so now we're going to do some top stitching now you want to start your top stitching in one of the on one of the sides because we're going to pull the threads from the inside and put it on the exterior inside so that way it could be seamless there's nothing shown so you want long threads and you want to start at one of the sides i'm going to sew just from the inside to show get um show you and here we go no back stitching i know that's hard one eighth of an inch all the way around Take your time. If you have to reposition yourself, make sure you're in the needle down position. I always want to say dog, uh, downward facing dog when I say that. I don't know why. Just some Shinova-isms. Make sure you got all those corners poked out if um if you didn't you always can go inside and um use like a non-sharp tool just to poke them out a little bit more but you don't want to poke them too much where they they rip out of the stitch because we did close we did um have a really close stitch of one eighth of an inch when we trimmed it down Okay, and then we're gonna want long, long threads and no back stitching. All right, so for this part, there's a couple things you could do. What I did last time, cause I could not see, um, I'm gonna, you are gonna wanna get the top stitching threads that are on the top and I couldn't see them with my first one so i pulled the bobbin threads from the lining and just like hand sewed them back into the hole ouch i think that's what i'm gonna do again so what i did this time because i cannot ever go in there and see where it is like i know the stitching is right here but seeing it is not happening so what I did this time is I pulled on to the bobbin thread to get the top thread and then I used a needle to pull the top thread to the lining and then I took and did the other one the same way all right so once I have these four threads what I did is I trimmed them so they were all the same length and I threaded them through a needle. Yeah, I'm doing this like doll making <laughs> and I pierced a hole that went straight to the lining. And that's how I brought them all. And then you take your threads and we're going to tie them off. I'm just going to open this up so it could be easier to tie off. It's not uh, graceful, but it gets the job done. <laughs> I do it three or four. I'm going to do it three. And 
and then you trim the tails and you can put um you can put a bead of glue and it'll hold it down or a p uh, what i did on the last one is actually i took some permanent double-sided tape and just like placed it over it but as you can see there's no back stitching so it has like a very nice seamless look so we we did that and what we're going to do for right now is we're going to get some glue and we're going to glue this close and i know what you're saying what show the glue you can do a ladder stitch but nothing came up with this it's pretty it's pretty cool and as the my pole basket just fell <laughs> so we're gonna put we're gonna put glue to set in the whole turning um turning a hole area and i'm just going to also put a bead of glue on um those threads you don't have to put a whole lot um last time i used a uh, i have a glue brush it it looks just like a spatula like a plastic one but i have it just for glue and just going to press and i also last time just rolled it so the glue can spread out but yeah it stayed it was it's a pretty cool thing and then i i kind of want to do this opening for other things it just stays um i'm really excited about it so <laughs> With that being said, we go on to the next part where we're going to punch some holes in our bag. So the first holes we're going to do are in the corners of are in the corners of these two areas. All right, and then we're going to um, do get our ruler and do some measurements. So we're going to do it from the zipper side first, and we're always going to measure um, from the bands, the band underneath the band, and then it's one fourth of an inch away from the um, the lining side band. So I'm going to do that. And we're going to start with their measurement marks on page 26, figure 103, I'm sorry. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm doing the one fourth of an inch right from the exterior band. One fourth of an inch from the side seam panel. And yes, I take up forever to measure things out because I just really wanted to be accurate as possible. Because right now it will be, I will be super upset if <laughs> I messed up from this point on. Because it's hard, it would be hard to fix it. You could do like decorative rivets or things along that line, but still. And I have a rogue thread. All right. So we have our holes that we punched there. And then if we go to figure 104, we're going to play, we're going to be doing some more rivets, riveting. We're going to be riveting these together. So first things you need to do, we're not punching holes on this side because this that's what the wings are for. Um, the first thing you want to do is get your corset rings. I got mine from Emmeline bags. So you have those. And then I'm going to get some extra. I used long and extra long rivets last time. It just depends on how thick the corset ring is. Um, Emmeline bags is actually not that thick. So I was really excited about that. I know, weird thing to be excited about, but it's true. Okay. 
So I'm going to put my rivet press up. Okay, I have my corset rings. I have two because I want to have this person be able to have it as a um, night bag. So I'm going to feed the Mel exterior to the backside and then place it, place a corset ring on top of it. So pretty sides up. There is a wrong side. It's flat and smooth on the right side and it go, caves in on the wrong. So I'm gonna put the pretty sides up. And then I'm going to take my wing and place it through the first hole, get a cap. And place it on there. So while I'm there, I'm going to grab another rivet and place it through and feed the bottom hole. It gets, a, you have to do a little pushing and moving things out of the way, but it'll work. I just, before I set one rivet, I like to see how it looks, which this is a good thing because this is not punched through all the way. And that would have not been fun if I make sure that this other side is. That would have not been fun. So now that I know it's gonna fit, I'm gonna place this, um, the lower one on first, and then just place a cap on it. And I'm gonna set it with my rivet setter, Minkus and Margo. I got it on Etsy. They've been around on Etsy for a long time and they have really great customer service. And I like the fact that they have videos. Um, so if I get different dyes, I can see how different things are set up. This cap does not want to put on. Sorry, I had to set it. Okay, and then I'm going to put the corset ring on. And I'm putting the, you're putting the wings in towards um, themselves. Like you're, so the wings are gonna to face towards the inside of the bag. I'm gonna set this rivet. And that did not set. Okay. Bear with me for just a second because I'm just getting like a whole bunch of rivet duds. <laughs> I got it. I went to get rivets. I should have got them from Emmeline Bag and I know it and I didn't do it and now I regret it. <laughs> Set this real quick. <laughs> she knows you're struggling with rivets, pretty much. That's what I always struggle with. <laughs> Okay, we have one side down and let's get this other side and then we just put together our um, our <laughs> as I drop more, um, we just put together our strap and we're good to go. That's this bag comes together fairly quickly. Alright. 
And last but not least, put it on the last corset ring. I'm only putting on two on the first top part of the the very top part of the where the, the two rivets are. There's one in the lower wing and one on the top part, and we're gonna put one on the top part. You could just put one if you want. Um, I think you could probably even do like a D-ring tab, but I don't know how clean it will look. I mean, you probably could use some different hardware too, but I like the corset ring because it's very light and they're, they're really cost effective and they give a really nice look to it in the bag. There we go. Put this over here. We have our wallet. Look at how nice that is. And it closes off. And um, the hardware that the the frame on the front, uh, the the mallet piece, not mallet piece, the bag hardware is amazing. It's so pretty. I definitely want to order some. It's just very simple and very chic um, clutch. So let's make this um, handle. And the handle is very easy. We're going to put, we're going to put this together um, using some double-sided tape real quick. And we're going to fold in on itself like any other strap that we've ever done. Leaving a one eighth of an inch gap. The one thing that we're doing a little bit different is we're going to sew only one side, the side that is open down using a one eighth of an inch seam allowance, back stitch in the beginning and end. Fort just being one side getting sewed down, contrasting thread could be a nice feature and add to the bag greatly. And as everything fell, I'm hoping my swivel hook didn't fall. Okay, it didn't. Yay! <laughs> so we're going to take our swivel hook and we're going to thread it through and we're going to fold it over and take the other end and fold it in. So it's just like a little sandwich, just like a little cute little sandwich and uh, measure. I, I like the fold is like one inch up. So you thread it through, put the other end on to hit the bud of the bar of the swivel hook, fold the full edge over and then punch a hole. Grab a rivet, a male part, and then you thread it through. And then you grab the female cap. Apparently, like, finger setting today is not my bag. <laughs> and you're going to put it through, punch it. And we have a beautiful clutch. And I like putting, also, if even if you're not going to make this a, um, where you can wear it as a bag, I like putting the corset rings on both sides, just in case someone's left-handed, right-handed, gives them options. So you have this really, I need to wipe that off. You have this really lovely wallet that has two slip pockets that are great for bills. You have a zipper pocket, which can be for change, can candy, or like passports or whatever you want to keep. Not passports, but like ID and whatever. You have tons of credit card slots. There are like one, two, three, there's six slots, but I don't know about you. I double up on mine. I probably could put 12, 16 cards in here if I wanted to. <laughs> and then you have this nice area where you can stick your cell phone and everything closes up with two little magnets and you're ready to go. And you can get the nice trim at Emmeline Bag. They have the curved one as well as a straight one. Um, and if you don't have it, again, can't speak about this enough. 
you could just use like decorative rivets like I did on this this cotton one a couple roses you have two two beautiful clutches they come together pretty fast um really great techniques new things that we're learning you gotta absolutely love how um alexis comes up with stuff again i don't have trims on either one of these but you can and like i just love these little roses they're so cute so very very easy to put together very fun so if you have any questions or reference to these bags please leave me a message i will be i am i think i'm responsive and i will try to get uh, get back to you as soon as possible if you um if you have any other bags from Oro Rosa you would like me to see, please comment down below. Um, I will have the link to where you could purchase this pattern. And if you have, like I said, any questions, comment. And I really appreciate you coming back and sewing with me today. And I will talk to you real soon. Happy sewing. Bye.